Some of the greatest slams did not win the dunk contest. And some of the most creative dunks have been forgotten. These are the lost dunks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Lost Dunks, presented by Geico. Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, and Dwight Howard. Before they were dunk contest champions, they all had lost dunks. And over the next 60 minutes, we'll tell you their lost dunk stories, as well as others you might not remember. So let's start it off with the man most associated with the slam dunk, and I don't mean Chris Anderson. Here we go. Can he do what he did in 76? Oh, Doc flying down the lane. The idea of soaring in the air, flying in the air is, is always you know, part of the grand scheme of things when you, when you got hops. How far out can you jump from and not break your neck? First of all, you, you have to remember he got the crowd going by taking the ball and he took his time walking back as far as what he was going to do. And every step he took, oh, oh, wait a minute, no. He's not going to do it. He's going to start way down there and try to take off. And the crowd just rose with them. And they were waiting. They were anticipating this dump. You're not jumping from the top of the key. Free throw line is the measuring stick. And he set it, the bar is set, and no one's ever broken that, that measurement. Hits it off the back of the rim. The impossible has happened. I'll never forget that second dunk in the finals by, by Julius. He goes to the windmill. Uh, we've seen the entire repertoire from Julius. And he misses the dunk, which is deadly. Yeah, I maybe I got a little too excited for, you know, 34-year-old. But uh, but it's still, you know, it established something that is folklore. Um, in NBA circles and in basketball sports circles, that uh, the slam dunk contest is, is, a, is a big thing and it's a big deal. This is the last one for Michael Jordan. He feels the pressure. Here he goes. Oh, <laughs> spectacular. A huge fan. I mean, uh, him and Dominique Wilkins' dunk contest was just unreal for me. Uh, what, I, what I did was tried to write down the dunks. Uh, didn't have a VCR where you can really stop it. You just have to wait till they replay it. So I tried to write down and memorize the dunks and then try to run out and hurry up and try them in the backyard. Well, Michael was the first guy to ever jump off sideways. You know, the Superman jump, you know, most guys used to call it. He, and most guys jump one feet, one foot, or two feet. But no one jumped off of two feet and jumped sideways until Michael started doing it. That's crazy to be able to cup it, bring it over the other side, go way up over the rim and, and complete the dunk, you know, for a guy to do a dunk like that and still not win the slam dunk competition, you know, he had some great competition. He only needs about, I think, a 40 to win this. Here he goes. Oh, like that'll do it. <laughs> well, what made Michael Jordan's dunk interesting, yeah, it was nice in the cradle law, but I liked how he was rocking the bling. You know, he had a little nice tight gold chain around the neck. You know what I remember about it? Me trying to find some uh, mom's jewelry, trying to put it on. Trying to go outside, trying to get a whole bunch of crates, and almost breaking my neck, and trying to cuff it. Well, Dominique only needs to come up with a great dunk here. If he gets a 48, he can't lose. I guarantee you he will not get 50 on this dunk. Guarantee it. Well, I think the two-handed windmill to the naked eye looks safe, because you have two hands on the basketball. But the thing that, that most people don't understand is the force that you're jumping one way and you're creating another force going the other way with the basketball, how difficult that is. You got two of the best dunkers in the industry league going head to head. And uh, man, the tension was high in there. And it came down to the last dunk. Who was going to win it? He got robbed. I don't care what anybody says, you know. It was in Chicago. Uh, it was the one All-Star game I played uh, on, and I was sitting right there. 
and there's no way Dominique did not win that dunk contest. Oh, it's a huge disadvantage. That's, you know, Chicago's Jordan's town, you know, so, uh, yeah, you got a disadvantage going in because, you know, he's, he's like God there in, in that city, so, but that's what makes it fun. Dominique versus Michael Jordan would never, ever be top because they were going dunk for dunk. Whatever it was, one was topping the other one. Kemp has moved about 95 feet away. A double clutch with a one hand, leaving from just inside the free throw line. Sean Kemp will power funk. And think about it, he was a foot inside. And he, if he would have started off from the free throw line, he still would have made it. Not only is he 6'10", but the way he contorted his legs and jumping almost from the free throw line. We've never seen a guy 6'10 be able to be that limber and make a dunk that tough in a while. What Kemp did was he made it like a hurdler, and he brought it back at the same time. So when he came back in the right hand, it mimicked his right leg going backwards. And uh, I mean, that's just an incredible dunk. That was my guy. He's supposed to win that. They just gave it to D. Brown because he did that crap. Man, you was supposed to win, Sean. You was supposed to win. You know I was right there going crazy for you. They burnt you. It means a lot to me. Even years later now, you look back at the dunk and you say, hey, yeah, the dunk was probably what I'll be known for. Well, I tried to improve on all the skills in my game, the all-around part, but the dunk will definitely go down as what I was known for. There's no way. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? And he's going to get it. Okay. Oh! oh! No way. Oh, my goodness. He did that easy. First of all, let's start with it. It was a bad pass. So you had a bad pass by your point guard, and the, foot, and the rim is 11 feet. No, let me say that again. The rim is 11 feet. I would have been more impressed if he put up to 13, 14 feet. You know, again, like, if he would have had some some style and some flair with it, like, if he would have windmilled it, then I would have been like, greatest dunker ever. Dwight Howard is the most athletic seven-foot guy in the history of the NBA. We've never had a guy who could jump like him. And to be able to jump 11 feet easily, too. You see, uh, if you watch that, he's not even straining, you know? Yeah, it'd be curious to me if he could dunk on a 12-foot basket. When I was uh, in L.A., they had a, a goal that was 12-5, and I dunked it. That was in my younger days. I was like 21. <laughs> Seriously, if he can jump on the Superman, he should win it. No, I told him, I said, just make sure you push off the back of my neck so you can actually get over me. Because, you know, if he would have just tried to jump over me, he probably wouldn't have did, uh, did it. Dwight knows how to work a room, and he, you know, and he's a good guy. You know, it, it's not like in the midst of a contest he's going to shelter himself in the in the corner and I don't want to see the other guys dunk. I'm just going to come out and do it. Yeah, Nate asked him to be part of it, and I think part of Dwight was, I'd like to see if he can do this too. Whatever you need to have a successful dunk, go ahead and do it. You know, because that's what people want to see. They want you to have fun. You know, yeah, I remember uh, Shaq told me this is where you show people who you are right here. And I took that and ran with it. Coming up next on The Lost Dunks, presented by GEICO, we'll take a look at the dunks which required a little help. And still to come, we'll find the best of the lost with our slighted six. People will remember his dunk because he named it. And it was a dunk that nobody really ever seen it before. And I tried it and damn near tore all my knee ligaments out. have time to sit around and think about it. I don't know what David Wesley's doing with a camp order. This is great. And he made a great pass. This one is starting to heat up right now. I had a camcorder and I wanted to document the whole footage, so I figured, you know, why not uh, put the camcorder dunk uh, in the whole uh, all-star festivity. You know, Baron Davis could jump really high, so if he would have, like, windmilled it or something, it probably would have been better. But uh, Wesley didn't even stay there with the camera. He got nervous, and, you know, he fell back. And then we didn't even see the footage. Well, it was a good dunk if it would have been one of our TNT cameras that David Wesley was holding as Baron Davis was jumping over him. They should have had that rigged up so that you could see it as he went over him. If he had done that, 
then BD would have gotten a higher score right there. The dunk was phenomenal. I think that he gets more points for that because he cocked it back like this and dunked it. And then, you know, the creativity to have Wesley out there with the camcorder, good idea. I eventually lost the camcorder like an hour after the dunk contest. <laughs> so who knows where that thing is? Oh, he's gonna do this. Oh, he's gonna do this. He's gonna jump over. He's gonna jump over see what? Oh, I'll believe that when I see it. He's gonna jump over see what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, then one year we had that dunk wheel where they had a spin and then you had to do something. Gerald Walsh got to use your partner. Uh, uh, Gerald has jumped over me many times in practice playing around, and uh, I was just worried that I didn't mess up the pass. When most people are running, if there's something in front of them, they're looking down. But he has to catch the ball, then find the rim. That, to me, is what makes that dunk incredible. Now, it was a great buildup because Steve Webb's, what, six foot eight and a half, six nine, and everybody thought, oh, wow, this is going to be great. I knew he could finish it, but the thing about it is you just see kind of transformation. It's kind of the old Dominique Windmill, but he's actually catching it off a bounce. When Wallace went to jump over, Steve Webb was chicken, and he bent way down, and so actually the jump wasn't that spectacular. Then Weber stood up, and so a great idea by Gerald Wallace, but probably a better idea for Steve Webb to duck. He gets this, like it's gonna this. be crazy. I like this. Oh, he got it. Oh, he got it. Oh, he got it. That was, that's what a dunk contest is supposed to be. High degree of difficulty, use of props creatively. I like stuff like that because some, somebody put some thought into that before they went out there. Nobody has ever done that one. That's, what, that's why that one stands out. Well, I was coming up with all different, different ideas of dunks. You know, I had, I had all 360s, windmills, and I said, you know what? Aha, uh -huh. Steve Nash, soccer. Well, Mari actually came to me and, and asked if I would help him in the dunk contest and, and incorporate some of my soccer stuff into it. So, you know, I came up with the, the uh, actual move, but, uh, you know, it was his idea to have me involved. And I'm forever grateful. I never thought I'd be in a slam dunk contest, so <laughs> that was my route. Well, I thought Nash was supposed to be the one to throw it, so he throws it off the glass, and Nash headbutts it back. I'm, I'm not in my seat right there. They didn't even have to make the dunk. I will question and ask anyone if anyone could ever throw the ball, bounce it off your head, and for Amari to finish. By far the best dunk I might have ever seen with a tandem. He caught it off the back of the backboard and had to time it perfectly right and have the ability to catch it with one hand and don't hit your head on the back of the board. I mean, you had to, <laughs> all that stuff had to factor in. I probably would have hit my head on the backboard. What made Rudy Fernandez dunk unbelievable? It, it wasn't in real time. When, when you step back and we watched it in slow motion, that's what made this dunk that much more remarkable. And the reason why they don't appreciate it, because it took forever. Because they botched it. They messed it up. They mixed it up. They couldn't get it right. They wrecked it. They kept trying. At that point, they ran out of time. The crowd was down. And when they finally did it, people just saw oh, they're so relieved that they finally made the dunk. But if you just look at the highlight, look at that one dunk, Rudy Fernandez, that is spectacular. I cannot understand what this guy is going to do. <laughs> now, they're going to light the oh. candle, and I'm sure they're probably going to turn off the air conditioning so it doesn't blow it out. I was looking at it, I was like, what are you doing? You got a birthday or something? You want a cupcake or something? Are you kidding me? He stopped blowing <laughs> out the candle. Oh, oh, he oh, 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 you kidding me? And it stayed oh, on. Oh, it stayed oh, on. Oh, and all of a sudden, we see the replay, and he goes and, and dunks. Incredible. You know, a lot of people that really don't understand basketball, they so what's so special about that? To be able to blow it out, you have to be able to jump really high. I like the cupcake dunk, because you had to really have your head by the rim to blow that cupcake out. And, you know, you can say, well, you know, it was just wind. Well, to get up there and blow it out and hang and dunk it, I thought that was, I thought that was a genius dunk. You really didn't appreciate it until you saw the replay. And then when you saw the replay, it wasn't the execution but it was the exhalation that made it sort of unbelievably impressive. <laughs> you know, being the food aficionado that I am, 
I wouldn't have blew the camel out on a cupcake. I would have ate the cupcake. When he did it, I was like, man, he should have just bit the cake. Instead of blowing it, he should have bit it. And he probably would have won. Coming up next on The Lost Dunks, presented by GEICO, we bring you the dunks that were simply overshadowed by a higher power. And still to come, we'll find the best of the lost with our slighted six. And I like him because he's always thinking about what he wants to do. Here it comes. Yes! Yes! Well, that's going to be hard to beat. Yes, it is. You know what made Larry Johnson's dunk impressive? Is it just his swag? <laughs> Larry Johnson, that was nice. What he did was a 360 Dominique style rock the cradle and throw it down. See, a lot of people didn't know that he had a bad back. So for him to pull that off, that was very, 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 very impressive. Well, what makes uh, Grandmama's dunk impressive is for his size, you know, he was listed at 6'8, 6'9, but we all knew that Larry Johnson was only really 6'3, 6'4. So to have that much power into that compact body, that's what made it tough. The first thing I remember was that uh, Grandma Ma was the first time anybody ever done the 360 window in a, in a dunk contest. And then, I mean, everybody gives Vince the credit because, you know, Vince did it unbelievable. But Grandma Ma really, he really uh, pioneered that one. Now, the only way that I see him winning that championship or the title is that he probably should have gone with the whole Grandma Ma motif. I mean, I'm talking about the wig, I'm talking about the glasses and the dress. Come on, LJ, Grandma Ma. Goes for the second try. Over the chair. Oh, All right. <laughs> you had the little guy, but, you know, I was a new kid on the block. Neek was already have, have a dunk contest championship under his belt anyway. Woo! And Spudweb comes through in the clutch. <laughs> Take that, little guy. There was definitely a little separation between Neek and Spud. And we all knew that we had to come with it if we were going to do something. And that's one of the reasons that I decided I, was, I had to put a, a chair in there. Joe Wilkins in 1986, I was 14. It was kind of impressive because nobody was really dunking over objects at the time. Actually, funny thing about that dunk is I tried it the next day and I hit the chair and damn near broke my leg. <laughs> I'm sure the general manager and coach were losing their mind when, because back then, star players were in the dunk contest. It wasn't like role players or guys who were, you know, rookies. It was guys who were significant players on their respective teams. Gerald Wilkins, you know, actually had a good performance in the dunk contest. You know, he doesn't get a lot of publicity for it, but he, he actually was pretty good because his brother was so much better. So, you know, you know, he was the wrong guy in the wrong family. So he, if he was uh, Gerald Johnson, we'd probably be talking about him as a better player. But being named Wilkins hurt him a lot. Terrence Stansbury. Oh! Creativity. You Gerald, you use the chair, I'm going to one-up you. I'm going to put people in the chair. But what's funny about that dunk is it's almost like he brings two people randomly out of the audience, one sitting in the chair and the other one kneeling down as he jumps over them. And the guy in the white jumpsuit, that is the tightest white jumpsuit I've ever seen in my life. I just feel bad because if he had done that any other year, he would have gotten 50. But I bet they were like, well, the other guy just did it. You know, he got it from me. He, he obviously, he, he wanted to get a score 50. So he said, if I put two in a chair, I should get more. As I watched him, I knew I could outdo him. So I decided to bring my brother in to sit in the chair and a friend to go in front, which meant I would have to jump higher and go further. But he turned the chair sideways. It wasn't the, the back of the chair. He wasn't facing him. The possibility of kicking someone in the head and going further, I guess they didn't think about that for some reason. I'm not sure. Because I did it first, it, it lent more to, you know, this was tough, acrobatic. We're going to give him the 50. Terrence, they gave him the 48. But well, this is a good dunk, though, if he does make it to warm up with. Yeah. Oh, great dunk. That's a good dunk. Look at that, and almost all 10s on the side. That was one of those signature dunks that I was doing back in high school. And I figured it was one of those unique dunks that a lot of folks can't do. Amari Stoudemire took a page out of uh, Isaiah Ryder's East Bay Funk Dunk and tried to duplicate what Ryder did. Oh, between his legs! How about it? The problem with Amari is he's six foot ten and a seven foot arm span, and he made it look easy. It's too easy, man. 
This is this is too easy. It's, I think it's kind of easy for Amari. I mean, Amari's six ten. He got unbelievable hops. Uh, I think I think he could have came something better. I'm more impressed with the dunk over Oliver Candy. Bounces the ball to Amari. You usually don't see real tall guys put the ball between their legs. Well, I put Amari in the same category as Sean Kim. Because guys at 6'10", 6'11", almost 7 feet, shouldn't be able to dunk this well. Amari showed that, you know, big fellas just don't have to do big dunks, that, you know, we can we can get some ballet up in the air, too. <laughs> it was a great dunk by Amari Stoudemire, but not really very appreciated. If he makes this, this over, Kenny. Oh! That's it. That's it's hard. done. That's it's hard. done. That's hard to do. Yeah. 50 from the judges. Yeah, that did yeah. it. Oh, my goodness. That's just, that's just stupid athleticism. That's just crazy right there. To catch the ball off the bounce, wrap it behind your back, and dunk it. I never seen that one before until he, he, uh, he accomplished that. You know, you talk about clockwise, counterclockwise. He did that dunk behind his back backwards. He's so talented, he was able to finish that. And that's what made it incredible. I've seen that before, but never with the power that he's done before. Seeing guys throw it off the back and catch it, but not be able to catch it and be looking above the rim like Andre Iguodala does. Andre Iguodala, he is Dr. J in, an, in another body, definitely. He's probably the best runner-up in, in recent history ever. That was the year when Nate had like 30 chances, and he kept throwing it up there and finally got it, and the crowd got behind him. Tell you what, this boy is an amazing shoot. Oh! Yeah. yeah. Andre, you were robbed. It was your dunk contest to win. We're coming up next. We'll take a look at the moments we'd like to forget. I think he hurt his right knee. As the Lost Dunks, presented by Geico, continues. doesn't wet your whistle, I don't know what will. Welcome back to The Lost Dunks, presented by Geico. And in case you're wondering why I'm hosting a show on Slam Dunks, well, let's just say I'm kind of a big deal. Brent will always be cool with the brothers. For a white guy to win the Slam Dunk Contest, that was pretty cool. All right, let's take a look back at the ABA Slam Dunk Contest from 1976. A man who can just about touch the rim from his tiptoes, the most dominating figure in the ABA at seven foot two, Kentucky Colonel's Artis Gilmore. Don't you just love high definition? It's like you're actually there. Ah, don't take off your warm-up top, artist. Don't you know that nobody's lost a dunk contest when you keep your sweats on? I can vouch. This has to be the first time I've ever seen somebody go out, do the dunk, with a sweat jacket on, but you were certainly sensational. I gotta stay warm. I don't got much of a body. Oh, sweet. He's going from the free throw line. Probably a good idea not to go from that free throw line, artist. It's not that hard. How do you cheer for that? I mean, he basically just threw it in. No way you get away with something like that in today's dunk contest. There is no way. Superman! Still, the one silver lining from the 76 contest was the NBA making sure to never again invite a player taller than seven feet. At seven foot four, the sensational rookie from the Houston Rockets, Ralph Sanders. Seven foot four. Pretty impressive, Ralph. But you know what would have been more impressive? If you weren't seven foot four. I mean, come on. The only time America wants to see a guy seven four in the dunk contest is when he's getting posterized. Here comes McCready. Oh, he just sucked the gravity right out of the building. Now that was impressive. What else we got? Now Paul Pressey, his third attempt. He had 44 and 35. Oh, again, just more or less kind of your basic cuff dunk. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Paul Pressey in a slam dunk contest? Don't you know that point forwards don't do slam dunk contests? Ain't that right, LeBron? Right now, I'm preliminary putting my name 
in the 2010 yeah, dunk contest. <sighs> what is it with LeBron and decision? I'm not even gonna touch it. This rookie's nickname is the Rocket of the Dallas Mavericks, Tony Dumas. Tony the Rocket Dumas told me, and just me, that he had a special dunk in store for the contest. Is 6'6", he's 22 years old, and he has been practicing on a dunk. Matter of fact, he's kept it secret. It's, he only told me. The Texas. Well, Texas. He told you too. So young Tony Dumas is 0 for 3. I think he hurt his right knee. Okay, okay, so we invited one guy that's never dunked in an NBA game. I can assure that won't happen again. The next competitor now is going to be Chris Jackson, who's never dunked in the pros, but did dunk a couple of times down at LSU. Th that has to be a typo. I mean, TNT never screws up graphics. At the miss. Uh, wake up, guys. This is the slam dunk contest. Isn't there one judge who's excited to be here? How do you feel about being a judge today, Martina? Well, I wish I could do one, but uh, <laughs> I think I, in my next life, I would like to come back as a black basketball player. And remember, out of these six competitors, three will advance to the finals. Two things you have time for. You got time to hydrate, you got time to think. Think about that first dunk. That's right, hydrate and think. All right, two sips, one more, Alan. That's good, perfect. Now think about it. Big first dunk coming up. And don't drink too much. Don't. Now that's too much. Off is it. Charles Barkley, give us your thoughts on Allen Houston. Well, I don't know if he's going to win, but that was the most original dunk I've ever seen. That will bounce off the head. Come on, Chuck. That dunk's easy. I can do it right now. That was easy. What else we got? Went from the Orlando Magic, Daryl Armstrong. Well, Daryl's already worked up a lather, and he hasn't even attempted one dunk. He might want to load up on some Gatorade. Spanish League All-Star, and he has been tutored by none other than Shaq. That would have been good, Reggie. Right here, the little guy's dream. Oh, but he's two more. Oh, he's not gonna make it. They will certainly review that. Yes! It's good! This building just exploded. Oh, it's good. Daryl Armstrong at the buzzer. Daryl, you might have missed two dunks, but I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, man. Coming up next. It's forgotten dunks by forgotten players. Remember Darvin Ham? No, you don't. Still to come, we'll find the best of the lost with our slighted six. He came up with it. You know, he just said, you know, throw the ball on the backboard and I'll do the rest. I mean, can you get as many of these as you want? Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Good, good question. This one looks like a good one. Yes! <laughs> now, see, that's good. That's big time right there. That's creative. See? Well, I got the idea to do that dunk from Brian Short. So what he used to do on our layup lines in the World Games, he'd take the ball and he'd bounce it between his legs and let everybody else go dunk it. Because he couldn't jump, but he was a great passer. It's Kenny. I mean, of course he talks about being in the dunk. He talks about everything. Kenny Smith's dunk was terrible. That was the worst dunk in dunk history ever. It was a gimmick. Gimmick dunk. It was one of those senior, senior videotaping win a contest dunks. But the positive thing is that hair is one of the worst hairdos in NBA history. You know, actually, it was pretty good. I mean, to throw the basketball, the time it about. And he didn't look over his shoulder. Hey, you know, people don't understand. Kenny had a lot of ups. Plus the fact that it would hit it, turned around, dunked the ball. As you might appreciate this, he slapped backboard. Young guys don't slap backboard anymore. Kenny ended off with slapping the backboard. Dominique Wilkins over the underdog, the upstart, the upset-minded Kenny Smith from Sacramento. This is going to be his build-up dunk right here, Red. Remember, he just has three. Oh! 
Now that was tough. Darvin Ham went ham on that play right there. Touched the backboard, reverse 360. Ooh, sick. And it was like he reversed himself and went the other way. And I'm not sure how he found the rim again. That's a tough angle. Anytime you do a 360, you got great athletic ability, obviously, but you also have been able to hang in the air quite a bit of time. That dunk that Darvin Ham did is a great park dunk. Most backboards are either metal or they're wood. So when you slap it, it gives the effect and let everybody know what you did. See, Darvin Ham, if he was, did that in, in Rucker Park, oh, he would have got a 51. I didn't know he had no uh, skills like that. You know, he might have been in uh, ballet or something or gymnastics when you was young. But okay, man, you can get up like that, do it. Yeah, I think Mary Lou Retton was coaching him on that one. You know, he runs down, does the double axle twist, and then just goes up and dunks it. I mean, it's hard to jump twice in a row, let alone do a backflip and then dunk a basketball. The one thing that I told him afterward is that he should have done is once he came out of the flip, went straight into the dunk. That one step pause cost him a 50. Well, DeMar DeRozan, obviously, he was a rookie. Uh, I think he was a little nervous going in, but he was up against a very small hurdle. Kryptonate, the two-time defending champ, he had his hands full. The difficult part was not for DeRozan, but it was actually for Williams, because he had to throw a perfect pass off the side of the backboard. When you're coming up at the rim, and the rim is right here on the side of the backboard, and you have to move away, to be able to concentrate, catch the ball, move out the way, and do it all at once, I think that's an underrated dunk. Yeah, that was, that was a unique dunk because he threw the ball off the side of the backboard and then was able to catch it and then windmill. You know, that's, that's one of those things you got to have great athleticism and also awareness on where you are. Oh, oh that was beautiful. That was a great dunk. Jamario Moon is one of those guys that we call pogo stick. He loves to jump. He goes for every rebound and whew, what hops. That was probably one of the toughest dunks I've seen. You know, you got to throw the ball, throw the ball out, and then you got to turn around, and then you got to go find it with your hand, and then dunk it. I think that's a tough, that's an extremely tough dunk. And I thought it was a great dunk, but apparently my son was a little, uh, you know, was a little tired, so uh, he, he thought the dunk was only okay. See, if you go to a store, right, and you know you want to go buy a suit, if you got a good salesman, you're going to buy that suit. But if you don't have a good salesman, you're going to just say that's a nice suit. He didn't sell a dunk, because that was a nice suit. <laughs> oh! I told you I'm I told you I'm kidding. It was extreme, though, because I, th I thought I was going to get hung. I got hung a few times. I did it in practice. And, uh, but when I got out there, just you know, all the jitters goes away. And he has that perfect height. You know, that's 6'6", six, 6'5", six, 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 that range, that's when you're the perfect height to make a dunk look sweet. He used that weak hand, somehow caught the ball back here, and then got up and dunked, and then just kind of stared at the crowd. And uh, it, was, it was impressive. Seven, maybe eight people in the world that can do that dunk. The dexterity and the flexibility you need in your body to bring it around, and then to bring it back up, the, the, the hand size and strength, then to jump it, eight people at max. Everybody else got to just put on a Nerf hoop. Does not have to do anything extraordinary, but he does! Coming up next, we reveal the best that never were as the Lost Dunks, presented by Geico, continues. Welcome back to the Lost Dunks, presented by Geico. Well, we've saved the best for lost. I mean, last. It's time to reveal the dunks which never quite made it to the top. Here are the slighted six. Now, Terrence Stansbury. First round, his first attempt, he had 34. Whoa! Oh, that's the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty, 360. I owe my due to Charles Barkley. He's obvious. He couldn't be in a dunk contest in 85, which gave me an opportunity to be there. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Charles for letting me have an opportunity to show what I could do in the NBA dunk contest, no question. Terrence is one of my favorite people because I got to know him when he was in college. 
and he was a, a very good NBA player. And he's a guy who was, a, a, I think he, why do people remember him so much? I don't think he ever dunked in an NBA game. The Statue of Liberty dunk when he turns and does a 360 and the ball doesn't move, but only his body turns, I think was one of the greatest dunks, top 10 dunks of all time. So shout out to Terrence Stansberry. And there it is in <laughs> slow motion, the 360 Statue of Liberty. I know I was the guy back in the day where, before I even did the Statue of Liberty 360, I kind of showed people what it would look like by walking and going through the motion. And I remember even looking at videos where some people were shaking their head, what is he doing? I think people will remember his dunk because he named it. And it was a dunk that nobody really ever seen it before. And I tried it and damn near tore all my knee ligaments out. The Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I like it so far. Francis. Oh, you know, when you see it in fast motion, you realize don't get, you know, the, the full uh, effect of what he did. And when you see it in slow motion, the way he cocked it back and almost touched his feet, I uh, was pretty impressive, especially for a guy's height. For myself, um, you know, I, I, I was just going off a whim. You know, whatever came to my mind, I didn't come in with a plan or anything. I was just going out there, you know, listening to some of the other guys and just going out there, just trying to the dunk as you go. T. Francis probably would have won a dunk contest eight out of ten years, but he just got caught up in the, in the Matrix because it was Vince Carter. Here is Vince Carter with his first stop. Let's go home. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go home. Incredible. Unbelievable. I think he was probably the best dunker to ever dunk in a dunk contest. Oh, it was just ridiculous. I mean, he's one of the greatest dunkers, if not the greatest dunker of all time. Uh, you know, some of the dunks that he was doing was pretty, pretty unbelievable. Not only Vince Carter's performance stopped Steve Francis from winning, but it prevented Tracy McGrady from winning as well, too. Does not have to do anything extraordinary, but he does! That was pretty much my best dunk. That's the best, you know, the, the best trick I had in the bag, but uh, it was pretty impressive. I got a lot of great views on that one. Instead of just doing a 360, he took the 360 and he put it between his legs, and then he came back and dunked it. He did something extra that will always be forgotten because of the great performance that Vince Carter put on. Going to my third one, once I got to between the legs, which I made up on the bench right before it's my turn, that's when I was like, it was over, and I was feeling good about myself. Man. I was right on the floor. I had a ball head. I think I had a great jogger suit on right next to my man, KG. And I remember saying to him, I've never seen anything this ill in my lifetime. And uh, he replied uh, kind of in the same way. Tracy McGrady wasn't bad, but Vince Carter did a dunk that... Vince Carter did a video game dunk. So nobody is really going to remember the other dunks. In the sophomore rookie game, he leads this competition. Oh, oh, that is freaky right there. That is freaky. Too many people can't really do that. I think he is right-handed, and he did that with the left hand. You know, you've seen guys come from the baseline and do it. Uh, he came from down the middle and did that with the left. That was pretty impressive. He just exploded and like he was off a trampoline and just powered it home before you could even see what he did. And then you get to see it in slow motion going through the legs and using that left hand for a right-handed guy. It's a great dunk. You know, I said, well, if I'm going to do anything to kind of start it off on the right foot, I want to go ahead and make a statement early. And so, you know, that's what I pulled out. And I think the other stuff would kind of hold me in a good position. He was very creative with his dunks. I remember thinking, yeah, I think he's going to win this one because he's done very well. But then. Jay Rich pulled it out. I mean, he came he came up with one at the end. That was something special. When I threw the lob up, everybody was like, oh, another lob dunk. Because I did, I did four lob dunks already. So I threw it up, and I said, you know what? It's the only time I ever did this dunk. I'm going to try it. Hey, see what happens. And uh, it went in. To me, Desmond Mason and Jay Richardson, this was the first year I call the computer game dunkers. Because they bought things that you do in a computer game and actually put them in the dunk contest. Oh! Oh! A 
perfect 50. I think Iguodala's dunk was the most underrated dunk I've ever seen in, in the contest's history. I mean, to come from where he did and to catch the ball literally behind the backboard and then reverse dunk it and then keep running all the way down the court, it, it was incredible. I was there that night, and I was just amazed at what I had seen. He came up with it. You know, he just said, you know, throw the ball on the backboard and I'll do the rest. I had no idea. <laughs> that he was going to do what he did. So a lot of these guys, like Nate, my teammate, who won a couple of dunk contests, he took like 20 tries. But AI threw it, Iggy caught it, threw it down with force, came under, bam, that was impressive. Very impressive. Uh, but he's overshadowed by Nate Robinson. He doesn't win it. But I thought that dunk was by far the best dunk uh, of the night. That's yep. why the crowd's booing. Iguodala should have won this thing. If he had done some of those dunks he did in the earlier rounds against uh, Nate Robinson, he would have won. But he didn't. So he had a better showing overall. But a head, man on man, against Nate, no, he did not outshine Nate Robinson. Here we go. Number two, Dwight Howard. That, did you see what, did you see what he touched? Incredible. That's telling you how high he can get. I didn't believe in myself when he goes up there and sticks it up there and dunks it too. You should have won the dunk contest. Dwight Howard's sticker dunk, when you step back and you show it in slow motion, because we didn't know in real time what he was doing. We just thought it was a regular dunk. No, I really don't think they saw what I did you know, until after I did it, you know, but I think sometimes big men get robbed in all, anything that they do because they think that it's too easy. Oh, he put, oh, the, put, a, he put a sticker up there. Look at that. Oh, oh, that's oh, what you're talking about. Like that. That's, that's so incredible. That's what I'm talking that's about. That's right, 12.6. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> the sticker dunk in 07 was probably the most underrated dunk ever when it first was done. I think the judges really didn't understand what was going on and they realized how high this guy had got. I should have did some more things too, but I wanted people to see how high I was before I put up a sign or anything like that. I just wanted people to see the smile though. That was the thing right there, the big cheese smile that I had. I, I, that's what I wanted to do.